Hello and welcome to Celebrity Cash in the Attic, the show where we rummage around the homes of the famous to find items to take to auction and raise money for a good cause. And today we're talking to a man whose voice has woven magic into the life of many radio listeners. Never one to be idle, he was one of the original judges on that famous musical talent show. And he's fondly known as Doctor, though you probably wouldn't call him up if you were feeling poorly. Have you guessed who he is yet? Yes, today I'm going through the busy streets of West London on my way to meet one of the great voices of radio, Dr. Neil Fox. Coming up on today's cash in the celebrity attic, Neil gets revved up for his rummage. The bike's not going to auction, is it? No, it is definitely not going to auction. And shows off some very trendy items. They're works of art, actually, they're beautiful. So when he gets to auction, will his items be in fashion with the bidders? Who bought that? A gentleman there, sir. Very good taste, sir. Or will they give his lots the cold shoulder? If there's no one here that wants to pay more, then I guess that's just the way it goes, isn't it? Find out when the hammer falls. For the past 19 years, Neil Fox has been one of the most recognisable stars on radio. He spent a decade at London station Capital FM presenting The Surgery, which is where he earned the nickname Dr Fox. And today he brightens up millions of Londoners' mornings as part of his breakfast show for another radio station. Mr. Darling. Oh, Alistair, good morning. How are you? Very well. Who are you listening to on the radio this morning? Neil Fox, of course. Correct answer, well Thank done. Oh, now, do you think from his dulcet tones that he's going to be a good collector? Well, we can only see, can't we? I'd like to think there's a few decent things in there to put in our top five. Top five, I saw what you did there. Ah, uh, you like that. Very good. Well, why don't you start hunting? I'm going to go meet the man himself. OK. Neil lives in West London with his wife and three children. His home is filled with interesting gifts and items that he's collected over his career, so today's rummage should produce some real hits to take to auction. Morning, Neil. Hey, good morning. Welcome along. Ah, oh, this nice must, to meet you. This must feel like afternoon for you, because you've been up since when? <laughs> 4.30, I get up every day to do my show. Um, well, you know, you get used to it. So the nice thing about it, you get up early, but it means you can get home, see the kids. And you come back to this beautiful house, obviously a family house. Who lives here with you? My wife, Vicky, and we've got three kids. So hence, you know, there's toys everywhere in every sort of conceivable corner and drawer. And little Scarlett, who's seven, and um, little Jack, who's six, and Martha, who's two. And so who's helping us uh, rummage today? Uh, one of my good friends, Beaky, who's uh, one of our neighbours. She's already rummaging upstairs, so we'll she meet is, her later. She's upstairs, and I have no idea what she's going to find. Hopefully something good. Now, are you a big collector? Because you've got lots of lovely stuff here. I was, down here is a lot of children's stuff, but I mm. know you collect things. We're not antique collectors. I've never sort of really been into antiques, but I think perhaps as you get a bit older, you appreciate them a bit more. I've always just thought it wasn't really my style. I like looking at them, but not necessarily always want to own them. And what are we raising money for today? What's your charity? Thought we'd raise money for, for Princess Alice Hospice, which is a hospice down in Isha in Surrey, uh, which is where I sort of grew up around there. And actually, they, they were the hospice that looked after my dad when, when sadly he was dying. So they looked after him for the last. But you know, I think hospices around the country they do an amazing job. They're all, you know, entirely funded by you know charitable donations, and they need money, and it's always nice to help. Great. And how much are we hoping to raise? Well, as much as we can, but I, I suppose at least five or six hundred quid would be brilliant. And I think we've got some good stuff. Hopefully, the stuff I've already picked out, I think, is hopefully going to you know, raise that. Good. Well, I know Curtis is in the house already, so should we go and find him? Yeah, come on, let's do it. Curtis Dowling has 20 years' experience in antiques. He's also an expert in forgery, so he has no problem spotting the fakers from the money makers. And it doesn't look like he'll have an issue at Foxy's house, as this much-loved chair has grabbed his attention already. There he is. Oh, hello there. A lovely chair. That's My a very chair. handsome piece, isn't it? What's mm. the story behind that? There's a brilliant uh, furniture maker called George Smith, and uh, I, you know I used to drive past his shop and sort of want to get some of his stuff. So actually, all our furniture's from him. But these are uh, we bought two of these chairs actually, and they just we just don't really have room for them. I suppose partly is sort of the whole kids thing. You sort of change your house around, so it's been sit it's been sort of sitting around, and I just, it'd be nice to get rid of it because it's worth. You know, I'm sure it's going to work, be worth good money to someone because it's beautiful. It's you know nice leather. It's aging really nice. It's classic shape. You know, I, I would have thought this would go for pretty good money. What do you think? The George Smith was making furniture in London 
in sort of 1780, 1790, into sort of the 19th century. Okay. Now, what's fascinating about that particular period, we're in a period of designers, not just cabinet makers. So there were some fantastic names that you'll know, Hepplewhite, Sheraton, they all designed furniture, pattern books, so people could make them. But this chap and Chippendale actually made furniture. So anybody that puts their hand in their pocket at this auction is going to do fantastically well and get a great item for actually not very much money. Okay. How much do you think it's going to be worth at auction? What do you think? I mean, it was two grand new. Yeah, it sounds about right. They're about three and a half new now. Are they? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So, well, I mean, furniture in many... I've always, you know, I, I'm amazed how little furniture gets second-hand furniture, unless it is an absolute period piece. You're absolutely so, right. So, what is it, a tenth of that? The man's spot on. Do you want to come and stand this side? <laughs> yeah, it's going it? to be £200, maybe £300, if we're lucky. But so it's going to be around... It's an absolute bargain. It's the sort of thing, you know, everyone's going to want to bid for. Who's got a period house, to be yeah. fair? Because they don't have to pay the two, three and a half thousand pounds as it is now for something like this. God, it's amazing in a way how little it's worth. But saying that, you know, 300 quid... It, it all is, helps. It, it's all better, helps than, helps better than, than sitting things. in a garage. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that's a good start, but we've got to keep on pressing on, so let's move. Okay, Let's go. Although this George Smith chair will only go for a fraction of its original price, it will make for very happy bidding, and it's a great start to the rummage. Beaky is already busy searching every corner of his house to find perfect items to sell at auction. I'm really excited about rummaging around today. Uh, I must be quite nosy by nature, so rummaging in somebody else's house is like, you know, a good way to pass a day. True to form, Beaky has found a few interesting items in the garage. It looks like her rummaging skills are going to set a benchmark for everybody else. Hey, Curtis, look at this. What do you reckon? Well, it's pretty obvious what it is, isn't it, I guess? It is. I think it's rather <laughs> nice, though. Yeah. I, I mean, these sort of things do do pretty well at auction, to be honest, yeah. for, for a number of reasons. I mean, practicality is probably the most important thing. And we've become a, a world of pine, haven't we? You go back a couple of hundred years and Pine was used uh, for all the hidden bits within furniture because it's cheap wood. But as wood has become more and more expensive and the request for wood has become to the point of madness now, mm. obviously the hardwoods that were so rich, so expensive and so popular, to be fair, have just outpriced themselves for the majority of furniture. So pine is something that we accept, something that we love. It's a softwood, it damages quite easily. But, you know, I think it's become part of our culture. And what's nice about this, it's got that sort of worn-in look, hasn't it? And it's, um, it's I mean, it's a nice-looking piece. It's not that nasty orange pine that you often see. It's, you know, it kind of looks old. Don't get me wrong, this is an antique. It's not an old thing, but the pine's a very good quality pine. Mm. Um, and something like this at auction should shift quite easily because, you know, it can be in your kitchen, it can be outside, you can paint it, you can put, there's so many things you can do with this. And people like that sort of rustic look, don't they? You know, yeah. that sort of shabby chic that's so popular now. I think we should take it to auction and it's going to make something like 80 to 150 pounds. That's not bad. Well, it certainly adds to all our total, but we've still got quite a lot to go. So let's carry on. Let's see. Curtis is confident this bench will be easy to shift on the day of auction. Pine is a safe option when it comes to selling second-hand furniture, as it's versatile and appeals to a wide range of bidders. Meanwhile, I've found a great item by famous Italian fashion designer Gianni Versace. Guys? Yeah? Is this, uh, it's extraordinary. I've never actually seen one of these framed before. I'm assuming it's a, it's a Versace... It's a silk scarf, actually, a, that It was. is a silk, scarf. Yeah. I was wondering what it was. I, you know, I ended up having a few of them. And, uh, and I just thought they were just, they're works of art, actually. They're beautiful. They look yeah. extraordinarily yeah. framed, because you see them, you know. Yeah, they do. Mm. And you actually sort of, you know, you see the design. It's, uh, it's an interesting piece. I mean, it's, um, in fact, we were just looking at the Versace book, and uh, we, did, we did quite a bit of work with Versace, and he opened that incredible sort of store. Oh, so you, in, you um, met him? In, yeah, I did, and he sort of signed this book to me and had this amazing launch party, and... Um, Who was there? Come on, spill the beans. Oh, God. I mean, it was an incredible party where I was sitting on a sofa actually talking about this exact silk with, with Elton John, George Michael, you know, Claudia Schiff, Cindy Crow. They were all there. Wow. It was unbelievable. Um, it really was a who's who and a very sort of informal fun night it was as well. So good memories of a brilliant night and, and a really amazing time, probably in fashion and style. It was very bright, very colourful. He was an incredible designer. So was, we're taking this to the auction? 
Do you think it's worth anything? I mean, it's hard to say, isn't it? Because it's, it's, uh, there's a great story behind it personally, um, and I think it's a wonderful piece. Well, I think this is social history we're looking at here. Okay. I think the interesting thing about Versace, you say out of fashion, well, Versace is still quite in fashion in a lot of areas, and that's what's great about an item like this. First of all, it has that great story behind it. It's okay. also, in a frame, very visual piece as well, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Any idea what we're going to get at auction for this? <laughs> well, it, I, I, see, I would think this is, a pay, this is a piece that it's whatever someone will pay for, because if you've got the right person in, surely, isn't it? I mean, it it's not, hasn't got an... It, it's, you know, it's a piece of silk in a frame, so it's whatever someone will pay for it. You've got to say that, to be fair, but at the same time, because we have to sort of give an idea of what we expect it to make, it's going to make at least 30 quid. And, you know, oh, it's I, gotta be more than that, and I would think, as you rightly says, someone who says, I have to have that, it could go through the roof. But we will never know that on auction day. Mm. And also, two auctions would produce completely different results for an item like this the majority of the time. OK, very good. Well, let's take this beautiful thing and uh, press on. Absolutely. Due to its unique nature, this Versace scarf is a tricky one to value. Curtis is estimating between 30 and 50 pounds. Hopefully on the day of auction, some lovers of high-end fashion will bid sky-high prices for it. And Beaky has discovered this tea set made in Sheffield. Selling items like these at auction can be problematic, as teapots are not as popular as they once were. However, valued between 30 and 40 pounds, it helps us get closer to our target. Neil, across the country, and particularly in London, you are one of the biggest names in radio. What's the secret? What, is the, what do you think makes you such a successful DJ? Hopefully it's because I'm honest on the radio. So you know, I think what you see now is what you get on the radio, and uh, I'm not two different characters. I'm the same guy. Um, I love what I do. I, I love, you know, London. Uh, I love music. So I think if you're honest with what you do, people, that shines through. Because radio is very, it is very intimate. I mean, it the is. difference between TV and radio is huge. I mean, you've done some TV as well, haven't you? Obviously, did yeah, Pop I've Idol. Lots of TV, and I love TV for what it is, but it's, in, it's incredibly different from radio. Part of the beauty of radio is, uh, particularly at breakfast radio, people are very vulnerable uh, when we wake up in the morning. We're all a bit tired. We could all have done with a bit more sleep, and uh, people have their routines in the morning, and you're very much part of their life, I think, on radio. You know, they wake up pretty similar times every day, and they, they sort of set their body clock by what we do on the radio. I mean, it, it, it's, it's a big responsibility. A, well, it is, you know, because you're getting people up and out of their house. And I think, and that's kind of what, what I, how I look at it in the morning. That's what you're doing. It's <laughs> a little bit about, about um, the hospice, because yes. you've chosen this, because I know it's you know, personal to you. Yes, it is. What, what exactly do they do? What, what work are we supporting here? Well, I mean, uh, the one I'm supporting is Princess Alice Hospice, which is down in Isha in Surrey. But, you know, hospices around the country do a brilliant job because there are lots of people like my father. You know, he had prostate cancer. Um, he was wasting away. And um, it w my mum was finding it really hard. And not only seeing someone that she loved um, with this dreadful um, illness, with cancer and getting weaker and weaker but I think what she found hard was that she was then having to become his nursemaid so what's fabulous about these hospices is they do all that for you and they look after they looked after dad for the last three weeks and mum could become his wife again and they do that for you know hundreds of thousands of people all the time and so I only have you know great memories and a massive respect for for them and I'm sure people have you know similar stories all around the country for hospices and they rely on charity work they rely on fundraising well it's inspired you to kind of choose that as a charity mm. and us to go and find some things to sell right happy to do that should we do that let's, let's go okay back to the rummage and Beaky has been very busy no item is safe with her around. She's found this decorative wash bowl and jug. It's by Blakeney, which is one of the more recently founded Staffordshire potteries. So although they're not more than 40 years old, Blakeney products are becoming increasingly popular, and this set could fetch between 30 and 40 pounds at auction. Right then, what do you think about this? Oh, I'm loving all these framed goodies from your, your broadcasting <laughs> career. I know, well they're good. Oh, but yes. actually this is another one, this is, this is, um, I don't know whether this would sell well. I mean, it's... I, oh, I, they love all this. Over problem. the years... You I, you too. Know, I mean, I just thought, you know, this, this might be an interesting one to auction off because I've done, you know, over the years, bands I've championed, they often, you know, give you discs, you know, for being part of a success story. And this was... I, I did a bit of stuff for this album with you too, one of my favourite bands. Yeah. This was, you know, for a million copies of the All That You Can't Leave Behind album. So they came in and we... I just remember that, that day knocking back... Um, it was Guinness with champagne. 
they sent, and I tell you what, we, we were on air doing an interview and we were getting, well, I was getting hammered because I can't take my drink very well, but they were, it was just a really fun day. So I just, I remember this. I remember this very well, this one, so. Is Curtis there? Curtis? Mm. What about this? Ah. We love it. Pop mobilia. Yeah, will the bidders love it? Well, the one thing about pop mobilia is in the last 10 or 15 years, it's gone through the roof. Mm. And these sort of things have driven prices up of, you know, the most astounding things. George Harrison's toast. You know, there's there's a list absolutely true. <laughs> have, you any, have you got any Bono's toast? I've got no, none of Bono's toast. No, none of Bono's toast. But there's toast. a list of items that would just make you laugh out loud yeah. that have sold for fortunes. You know, if an antique dealer says, this is going to be tomorrow's antique, leave it well alone. But this is the kind of thing that genuinely is tomorrow's very, very, very expensive item. I mean, I have... Actually, it's interesting. I, I, and would it be worth me... Um, printing this off, but I have an amazing photograph the day they gave this to me, of all four of them with me. The answer is yes. That particular story that, of yours, if the picture goes with it, is going to be a real add-on, because it isn't just Joe's soap with a picture. This is something quite important. So I think, let's get that printed off, and let's take this to auction. Any idea? Curtis, you've built it up so oh, much, I'm yeah. thinking Worthless. millions. <laughs> Quarter of a million pounds! <laughs> the hospice will be so pleased! Do you know what's so fascinating about some of the things we've talked about today? About a tenner. Some of the things <laughs> we've talked about today are such an emotive item that we could be very, very happy, or we could be slightly disappointed. Yeah. But at the very least, with that picture, with this story, this has got to be a minimum of £200. Oh, really? oh that's good. That's yeah. a big chunk of our target yeah. in one lovely more. piece. Pop memorabilia can be a great investment, and Neil is very generous to give this away. Valued at at least £200, it should be a big hit with the bidders. Beaky has donated these three prints by well-regarded artist John Silver. He's most famous for his pictures of dogs. This lot also contains a lovely landscape of London and a fishing scene. They're slightly damaged, but might get picked up as a restoration lot for 30 to 40 pounds. Oh! <laughs> That's a beauty! Thank you. My goodness. Ugh. Is this what you go to work on? It is in every day. Oh, so Rain or shine. Central London on this. I bet there's no traffic. It must be beautiful. I tell you what, riding through London at sort of five in the morning. Particularly at this time of year, it's cold. But on a summer's day, it doesn't get any better. Beautiful. beautiful. You're king of the road. Mm, it's gorgeous. And what else is it? Just bikes? Or do you have any other? You're the king of all the. I can see the glint. I like. Your eyes. Um, no, it's funny. Look, I love riding bikes, uh, and uh, I've had a helicopter license for about 17 years. So I love flying. I love. I really adore that. I think they're both things that sort of take you away let you escape. Did you ever own a chopper? Did you own one now? No, I don't at the moment. You know, kids have put pay to all that. They're expensive little things, aren't they? <laughs> um, no, I did. I, I've had four over, over the years. And, uh, and I, I mean, I really, did really... Did you used to go to work on the chopper? <laughs> that would be yeah. really impressive. No, at a park, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, that's a leisure thing. Now, the bike's not going to auction, is it? No. No. <laughs> no, it is definitely not going to auction. <laughs> yeah, I'd love the Prince Alice Hospice would be very happy if I sold my Harley, but no, this one stays with me. Off the bike and back to the rummage. Curtis knows that finding the right item is key, but we can only auction what Neil is willing to give away. Right then. So what do you think about these? Chairs or the railings? Uh, <laughs> railings. Well, I've got 13 of these. I've just counted the holes in the, in the bit that goes across the top. We took them off the back of the house when we were doing the extension. Well, the house is 1861. I somehow don't think, looking at those screws, that they're from that era. You're absolutely right. Yeah, machine-made screws came in in 1851. Yeah. Funnily enough, that's very true. Oh, really? Yeah. So, but sadly, these aren't from 1851. Right. These are fairly contemporary, to be honest. And these are, I would say, no more than 30 or 40 years old at best. OK. I mean, a lot of things were taken down to use for bullets and all sorts during the Second World War. So a lot of houses sat without anything and then were replaced. And there was a government grant in the mid-50s to start putting stuff back for people. OK. Yeah, I mean, tonnes of stuff was taken down and a lot of it wasn't turned into bullets. Farmers are still digging things up in their, in their uh, fields all over Germany. Cannons railings, all sorts. Why? Because we wouldn't let a bomber go out empty. If we didn't have any bombs, we'd fill it full of old cannons, flat irons, railings. Not that we'd tell the troops that, but yeah, you can dig up stuff all over Germany where we were dropping things like this. It would keep a bomb disposal unit busy for a week sometimes, some of these things. Okay. So probably your original railings either were turned into something or was laying in a field in Germany somewhere. 
There's not going to be a huge amount of value in this. One, because they're fairly modern. Even though architectural salvage has gone through the roof in the last few years, these sort of things are going to be fairly difficult to place because unless you've got the exact space for these, yeah. you aren't going to be bidding. And we're only going to have a finite number of people in the room right. who are going to be doing that. I think we're going to look at something like £50 for these. OK. Uh, you know, it, but it all goes it towards all goes our in, total, doesn't it? Does, it does, it all goes in. It's all looking quite healthy, actually, at the moment. Yeah, so £50 for these, someone's going to want them. Uh, yeah. And at least it takes them out of your garage. Yeah, my garage, where at the moment I'm just kick every time I go and they'll stub my toe on them. Exactly. So let's say £50, keep our fingers crossed on the day. OK. But I guess we better get on and find something else, yeah, haven't we? This way. Let's, let's go this way. £50 is not bad for something that's just collecting dust. And although Curtis feels there's not a huge market for these items, come the day of the auction, bidders may go off the rails for them. Valuing items with little auction history can be a fine art. So what does Curtis make of his final piece? Fellas, I've got something else here. Ah, more art. One just... last item, if I may. Oh, look at that. Unframed. Unframed and raw, isn't it? Did you do it? Actually, no, this is me. Oh. And this was, um, this was uh, a painting done by Timmy Mallet. Timmy off the telly. But he's also a very accomplished artist. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, he's become very good friends with Rolf Harris, because they live near each other, I know. And actually, his artwork's selling really well. Now, I've got a few Timmy Mallets already. Um, up on my walls around the house. And actually, this one I thought it'd be nice to donate to charity. What does this depict? Um, it, it's OK, it's me flying. Um, all the ones... I, I've taken Timmy flying with me a lot. And uh, he loves going up and he's a does great... He, is he in there with the easel? Well, he's not... Oh, he steady! He takes some photographs and then sort of... I think then sort of, you know, looks at the photographs and takes something from it. And, uh, yeah, it was a particularly good day we did this one. Timmy Mallet is, like a lot of famous people, starting to get well-known for things other than, than the television. Um, certainly for the last few years, his paintings have started to sell very well. Um, would you believe recently one of his exhibitions completely sold out in a very short period of time down in, down in Devon? So I think if you're happy to put it into auction, this should definitely come with us. I mean, um, and what kind of money do you think we might be looking at here? Well, it's small, but it has a nice personal story. Um, and I think we've got to look for at least £200 on the day. OK. Is that too no, 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 it's, no, it's fine. I mean, because, look, I think when you start to add these things together, that, that means we're actually going to getting up to a decent amount. Oh, yes, we're doing and, well. And who knows, we've got a, a mallet fan in there. Oh, absolutely. Or, or an art collector, you know, it might be worth them paying a little well, bit. Well, yeah, what you've got to remember is, as we know, his paintings are selling into the four figures. Maybe we're going to get really, really lucky. So £200? Look, I'm quite happy, you know, I'm quite happy to put this in and see what it gets. Well, fingers crossed, we could do ever so well with it. OK. If we say £200, that's still great because we wanted £500 to yep. kick off the day. We will have actually made 850 That's pretty good. Yeah, that's, that's very good. And I have to good. say, happy with that. we've got some lovely pieces and I really do hope that on the day they go through the, through the ceiling. There's absolutely no reason why two or three of them could smash that figure. It's been an interesting rummage as many of Neil's items are unique and tricky to value. Hopefully this U2 CD, valued at £200, will be music to the bidder's ears. This Versace scarf should bring in at least £30. This pine bench could have a value of £80 to £100. And valued at £200, will this Timmy Mallet painting of Neil Flying take off at auction? Still to come on Cash in the Celebrity Attic, will Neil Fox find his lots are top of the hit parade? Victory! <laughs> Victory is mine! <laughs> Or will they fail to chart? It's a bargain. Someone has got a bargain again, haven't they, today? Yeah. Find out when the hammer falls. It's been two weeks since we were rummaging round Neil Fox's house in West London with his friend Beaky, and we bought all his treasures, including the U2 disc and the Versace silk scarf given to Neil by the late great man himself. We bought them all down to John Nicholson's auction here in Hazelmere. Remember, we're trying to get £500 for Neil's charity, so we're hoping that all the bidders will be tuning in when his items come under the hammer. Today's would-be buyers are taking a final look around the sale rooms before settling in for the auction. Curtis is hoping they'll be interested in Neil Fox's rather eclectic collection of lots, including that painting by his good friend, Timmy Mallet. Curtis. Good morning, sir. Oh, you tucked yourself away in the corner with all I the have. paintings. Yes, indeed. And our painting. Our Timmy Mallet painting. Gosh, it looks quite um, striking amidst all these other ones. Yes, Timmy Mallet pictures, as we said when we were at Neil's house, are doing very, very well at the moment. But that's specific instances at specific galleries. This is a one-off painting 
hopefully it's going to do well. I mean, we've got some nice items, but what we do have is we've got some very unique and individual items. We've got that great U2 item, for example. We've got some U2 fans in. That could do fantastically well. And obviously the Versace scarf. We can't look back and see other Versace scarves have sold at auction price-wise because they haven't. So all we can hope is someone looks at it, likes it and buys it. If it goes wrong, I'm going to hide behind you. <laughs> I think that's probably the wisest thing <laughs> to do. Beaky and Neil are here, so should we go and find them? Yep, let's go and do it. There are lots of unknowns with this auction today. But one thing's for sure, commission is always charged on auction items. Different sale rooms have different tariffs, so do check out the details if you're planning on buying or selling. Neil and Beaky are hoping the bidding will be brisk today. Morning, guys. Morning. Hi. You're already checking out the items. Morning. Not yeah, no, I just thought it was a really nice little chair. You don't want to buy anything here, we're here to sell your no. stuff. Can we not buy? Have you guys been to auctions before? Uh, only a couple, so, so now I'm excited. What about you, Beaky? I've been to a few auctions, um, and I have been known to get a little bit over-enthusiastic, so hands in pockets today. What do you think is going to do well? Is there anything that you think is going to go really stratospheric? Um, I would think, uh, well, the unique things, you know, like the U2 disc, if the right person's in, hopefully that could sell well. That's the Versace print, again, you know, probably quite a rarity in a way, in, in sort of the, this neck of the woods, and, and perhaps the Timmy Malik painting as well. And all for a great charity. Yes, it is, for, you know, Princess Alice Hospice, you know, has a, a lot of meaning for myself and my family, so let's hope we can raise money for that. Very good course, and as you can hear, the auction's already started, so we yeah. need to get pretty swiftly to our places. Okay. Okay, come on. We settle into position in time to see our first lot of the day come up for sale. This is our leather chair, the George Smith leather chair. Yeah. Oh, you put a good price on this. Yeah, I've said two to three hundred pounds. It's about ten percent of what it cost. But furniture's a funny thing. You know, people either want that piece of furniture in the house or not. So for this one, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. The first charity lot, which is uh, Dr. Neil Fox's leather armchair, 50, 50 bids, 75, 100. 25, 150, 75, your bid, sir, at 175. No! That was ridiculous. 175, your bid, sir. Beaky, get in there. Where's my marble? At 175. 175. Give me my paddle. Oh, I got it. What did I say? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that awful? Compared to what, what I paid for it, it seems nothing, does it? But, you know. If there's no one here that wants to pay more, then I guess that's just the way it goes, isn't it? Neil paid £2,000 for this chair originally and knew he'd have to sell at a loss, but selling £25 under the lowest estimate really is a bit gutting. It's cold comfort that Curtis could see it coming, but at least he's feeling more optimistic about the next auction lot. Now, I've got relatively high hopes for this because it's useful, it's practical, and as we said when we looked at it in the mm, garage, yeah. we can do a lot with it. And it's not expensive, so I think this will do OK. Good. Here it comes now. And I'm 50 bid, 60 I'll take. At 60, 70, 80, 80. The lady in the front row at 80 pounds, 90 now. At 80 pounds, the bid's in the front row, well, where are we going? Come on. Make no mistake, I'm selling it. Selling at eighty pounds. Well, what was, did you say it was going to be? Eighty to hundred pounds. That's not bad. Okay, at least you got it right. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> Curtis called these things pretty well today because I think he said it might be sort of 80 to 100 quid. And so it went for 80 pounds and, you know, it was a bit bashed and old and beaten up. But I think that was part of the beauty of it. It was a nice bit of old pine. Um, it had been very useful. I'd, I'd had it for about 15 years. So again, though, it was sitting in the garage. So that's 80 pounds that was just sitting in the garage. So it's kind of nice to get rid of it, make a bit of space. And some, someone's got a very nice bargain there. I think that's a, that's a good deal someone had this morning. Well, our iron railings are coming up now. These ones are very specific, so I found it very difficult putting a price on these because mm. you've either got a use for them or you haven't. Where would you buy a set of railings like this? You know, I mean, what house is missing them? Perhaps somebody's pinched them. Mine. <laughs> oh, they are from your house, sir. Sorry. Right, the iron railings, 20 bid. 30 I'll take, 40 with me. Five now. At £40 with me, five anywhere. At £40, then they've had the time selling on commission, bid under estimate. Please. You're bidding 45. Good 45, okay. 50 against you. 55. The ladies bid. 
at £55 and selling at £55. Seven. What did you say? 50. 50 to 80. So that's good. So once again, you're quite good at this, aren't you? Have you ever thought of getting a career doing this? No, it doesn't pay, to be fair. <laughs> Curtis was spot on again. The railings get snapped up just above his lower estimate at £55, which is a result, since he thought they might be hard to shift at all. <laughs> the iron railings, they, they were there when I bought my house, so um, it's kind of, well, apart from having to buy my house, it's technically cost me nothing. And uh, when we sort of changed, changed our house around and had an extension done, you know, the railings had to go. So again, they were lying on the floor at the, at the edge of my garage. So anything we got for them was going to be good. Next up is the scarf given to Neil by the late Italian designer Gianni Versace. This is the item that I'm most excited about, the Versace scarf, because this is it's uber glamorous. So how much do you think this is going to go for? I'm thinking 30 to 50 pounds. Given by Neil Fox for his charity, I'm bid 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, your bid at 80 pounds, 90 now, 90, 100, 105. At 105, on. fresh bidder, I'm trying, sir. At 105, <laughs> there's the bid. 110, 115, sir. 115, 120, 125, 130, 135. 140. Make it sort of 150, sir. It's uh, easier for them to add up. 150. There's the bid, and I'm selling at 150 pounds. Thank you, sir. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, we've got to give that a clap. Who bought that? A gentleman there, sir. Very good taste, sir. That's great. You see, some things at auctions do really well. Turns out there are Versace fans in the wilds of Sussex. My wife came to view the auction last night and uh, she teaches um, uh, textiles and uh, she has an interest in, in things like that, sc that scarf, so um, I got the job of bidding for her. I think we were hoping to get it a bit cheaper, but uh, we, we, we got ourselves probably a bit carried away and ended up paying 150 I think, plus the, uh, plus the premium. That brings us to the halfway point of the auction. Okay. Quite nerve-wracking, but you've done extremely well because considering that some things didn't fly out of the room, we wanted £500 in total, and halfway through we've made £460. That's pretty good. So that That's is really good because you know the, the room is not buzzing. We haven't had lots and lots of crazy bids, but it all adds up. But you've got something to show me. I have. You can have a little break of cup of tea because we've got a gap before our next lots. Okay. So let's head on. Well, Foxy might do well to try and warm this auction crowd up before the second half if he's going to get some better bids in for his remaining items. Meanwhile, Curtis is an expert in forgery, and although the Stafford China on sale today is the real thing, he wants to talk me through how to spot a fake. What have you got here, Stafford? They are indeed. And I'll tell you why I wanted to bring you over to see them, because one thing that people should be doing when they come into auctions and they're buying and spending their hard-earned money is just making sure the things they're buying are what they think they are. Mm. Now, these are just catalogues of Staffordshire, which is fine, but more unscrupulous places could be saying that they're 19th century Staffordshire, which on the outset they look like, but there's certain things you can do when you're buying certainly items like this to make sure you're not the one being caught. And things like this give themselves away in a number of ways. So what are your top tips for finding a fake? First of all, colour can sometimes be a, a big giveaway. Because you're looking at the colours that should have been and were used in the Victorian firing. We've got colours here that weren't. So there's one tick in the box to say I'm pretty certain these weren't fired in Victorian period. So which colours are wrong here? The green and the yellow are not conducive to the period. Now, if you're carrying a colour chart, you're going to know that because you're going to hold the colour chart up against the colour. So there's your first tick in the box to say these aren't 19th century Staffordshire figures. So it's just the wrong shade of those colours. What else? Secondly, weight. These are lighter than they should be for their size. So the material and the makeup of the material is different. Now, if you've lifted enough Staffordshire figures before you start spending your hard-earned money, you're going to know that the minute you pick it up. Are these too heavy or too light? The real thing is going to be heavier. And quite often with any figures or any paintings, if you measure, you might find those measurements are perfect in millimetres. 
Well, I don't think the Victorians were using millimetres and metres in their day, were they? Quick tips to stop you getting caught buying Staffordshire or any other type of figure as well. So, buyer beware. Indeed, well, let's see how our vendors are doing because they're about to start the second half. So, shall we then leave these chaps? Back to Neil's auction now, and the three signed prints are his next charity lot. 20, 30, 40 I'll take. At £40, your bid, sir. There's the bidder and selling at £40. £40, the top end of Curtis's estimate. Yeah, what did he say? 30 to £40. This whole day has made me realise I need to go to auctions more because there are absolute bargains to be had at these places. And they were a bargain. You know, three prints, they were all signed by the um, artists themselves. But yeah, they were prints, they weren't, you know, the, the originals, clearly. But still, you know, these were limited edition prints signed by the artists. I, you know, basically a tenner each. That is absolute bargain. Well, the three prints did sell on estimate, but I get the feeling Foxy would like to see some more exciting results in the second half of his auction. Will the Blakeney wash bowl be a winner with the bidders? Now, these things are useful. You can have them as decoration or you can put flowers in them. So I've said 20 to 30 pounds. I think I'm there or thereabouts, but here it comes. So let's have a look. Two, five, three. Is the wash bowl and the jug there. Another one of these lots donated by Neil Fox, and I'm 10 bid. 20 I'll take, at £10, 20 anybody, Ooh, at £10, Victoriana, 15 if it'll help, 15 anybody, oh dear, maiden bid then, 50, you had pity on me didn't you, I could see that, there's the bid at £15. £15, that's nothing, that's a bargain. Someone has got a bargain again, yeah. haven't they today, yeah. Neil didn't get the result he wanted with the wash bowl set and saw it sell for a disappointing £15 underestimate. He still hasn't found what he's looking for in the way of good sales, but surely some bidders will desire the U2 disc up next. Neil, this is another one of your unique items, which have been doing really well today, actually, more better than your generic items. Because obviously this has got a great story. It's the U2 disc, it's got a photo, it's got your name, I mean, it's got lots of provenance. Mm. And you said 200 to 300 pounds. I'd like to think so. We can't look back on items that have been sold of a similar type. So we've got to put our finger in the air and just take a guesstimate rather than an estimate on this. Very, very rare item here. Donated by Neil Fox, the U2 gold disc. Bid me. 100 bid. 25 I'll take. 25, 150. 75, 200 on commission at 200 pounds on commission at 200. Against the room, make no mistake, 200 pounds on commission. Didn't really well, fly. But... We went where we said we were going to go again. We're, we're hitting the estimates, we're hitting the bottom of the estimates, though, aren't we? Well, a bid in the hand is worth two in the bush, and we'll gladly take £200 for the U2 disc, as it's one of the highest selling items of the day. The silver tea set sells next. There's the bid at £40. It's on estimate, but we're on edge, as Foxy desperately wants to increase his charity total. We've got no idea how the Timmy Mallet painting's going to be received, but Neil's ready to do his bit to get the bidders going. It's the Timmy Mallet painting now, and I think this is such a unique, I mean, Curtis has been talking about unique items. This is perhaps the most unique, because it's got you, your helicopter, Timmy. I mean, there's so many factors. I think it would really help if you stepped up onto the podium and gave a little spiel. Really? Yeah. Come on, then, I'll do it. Timmy Mallet uh, has actually, for the last uh, 10 or so years, been doing more and more art. His art, when he's doing exhibitions now, completely sells out. I fly a helicopter. Tim has been up with me many times uh, flying around. So this is me flying my helicopter with Timmy doing a painting. He's done quite a few, so I thought I'd do this one for charity because it's for the Princess Alice Hospice. So it's when my dad died and they did a great job looking after him. So I thought it'd be a nice one to sell off on this day. Let's get the heartstrings tugging. That's what it's all about. So it's a unique piece of art. 100 pound bid already. 100 pound bid, we'll go above 100 pound, 105 pound. Timmy Mallet original, right, 110 pounds. Thank you, madam. 110 pounds, we'll give me 115. We're 110 so far, 110 pounds so far. 110, 115, 120, thank you very much indeed. Sir, 125, thank you, madam. 
one thirty. We're at one thirty, sir. One three five. Thank you, madam. To you. One forty, sir. One four five, madam. For one fifty. One fifty to lady, sir. One five five. One sixty. One seventy. One eighty, madam. Two hundred pounds with bid so far. Two hundred pounds. Two ten, madam. 200 at the moment, we're stuck at 200 pounds, selling once. 200 pounds, selling twice. So it's yours, thank you very much indeed, thank you. Neil did a great job and he finally seems pretty pleased with that result. Victory, <laughs> victory is mine. <laughs> Good effort. So what did you say it would go for? Two to three hundred. Okay. You see, you're good, aren't you? How was it? How was it up there? Do you know, it was good. I'm glad it went for two hundred pounds. That actually seems quite reasonable yeah, as well. Yeah. I'm happy with that. It's good. The Timmy Mallet picture was the last lot of the day. So how much has Neil raised for his charity? It's all over. Good. So that was pretty nail-biting in moments, but that's the nature of auctions. And as I predicted, some things go well, some things don't go so well, but it all adds up. Because you wanted £500, you have made £955. Really? I'm, I'm really quite surprised. It's great. It started dreadfully, didn't it? Yeah. That's pretty good. You know, all for a good cause, and the it hospice will be very pleased. Oh, so you really chuffed with that. First, 955 they didn't have this morning. It's very good. The money Neil raised at auction is being donated to the Princess Alice Hospice in Surrey, which provides specialist care for terminally ill patients. People don't just come here, you know, if they're if they're going to sort of sadly die. I mean, people come here on, uh, just for a day. Men come here to, uh, to just have a bit of fun, actually. And so today, there's a magician here. There's a guy cartooning there, sitting there, doing a bit of music with them. It's just having a bit of fun, really. You know, and, and those things are, are actually, that's, you know, what it all comes down to, you know, giving people a better standard of, of care and life. The hospice is proud of its holistic outlook. They make a real effort to support not just individual patients, but also their friends and families. You know, it's less than 25% of the running costs for a place like this will come from the NHS. So that's another 75% that they need to fund somehow, and that only comes from charitable donations, you know, big or small. 